Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome to a new campaign on the channel. Today we are going to be uh, checking out some Hearts of Iron for the New Order. I'm on the new patch finally, uh, the New Order version 1.1.0G, the Cutting Room Floor Patch G. Uh, and it's time to uh, do one of those things which seems to be a rite of passage for everybody who plays uh, the New Order. It's time for the Comey game! Now, uh, I've expressed in the past in some live streams that there are a couple of particular Comey uh, uh, paths that I definitely want to do, uh, especially the Eurasian one, but I think the Eurasian one is, I don't know for sure, I haven't talked to any devs about this, but I've been seeing it consistently in the chat that they're going to kind of tune up the Eurasian path a little bit. And uh, even though it's apparently overplayed, the Holy Russian Empire is supposed to be an interesting look at the uh, Burgundian system. Hold on a second, I'm just going to adjust the desktop audio a pinch. There we go. This was a little loud in my ears. Uh, but I always hear that like, oh, every Comey path is, is great. You can go with this system and that system and there's so many coups and things. So I thought it would be fun to just go through a Comey game uh, completely blind. I'm not, I've, I've, well, I don't even know if there's any guides out there, but uh, I have not consulted with anybody how I get any path. Uh, in fact, uh, what I'll probably do if it seems like if it's something that, well, I don't know, we'll see how I'm feeling, but maybe when we hit a political uh, branching path or something, I might just flip a coin or use a random number generator or something. But you guys know that I really enjoy unifying Russia in this game. Uh, the Russian warlords have an awful lot of content. So let's just jump into it. Now I'm guessing... Oh, that doesn't look good. Okay, hopefully that's not going to be indicative of a bug. <laughs> There's no background here. Uh, but for for those of you who don't know, uh, essentially the what, what this mod is, is this is a Nazi victory path mod in which, um, yeah, Hitler and the Nazis have won, so they effectively control Europe. Uh, we're essentially, we're like kind of in the Cold War right now, and I guess I'll talk more about it once we're actually looking at the map, but let's actually find Comey. Yeah, here we go. Under Nikolai Voznesensky. Uh, so what you basically have to know before I read this part is the Nazis won, they defeated the Soviet Union, and then they, um, and then in the 50s there was a second war between what was left of the Soviet Union and uh, Germany and then Germany won that as well and then Russia ended up just fracturing into like at least a do more than a dozen uh, little small warlord states effectively all of which are of course claiming that they're legitimate Russia or just about all of which are claiming to be legitimate Russia and uh, are going to try to unify uh, the remnants. So, brief history. As the West Russian Revolutionary Front collapsed at the end of the West Russian War, that was the one that happened in the 50s, it was in Saiktikvakar, capital of the Komi ASSR, that the civilian government of the front found themselves in. From the witch's brew of, uh, ooh, that's a phrase that's not used enough, from the witch's brew of uh Western Revol Russian Revolutionary Front officials, Soviet political exiles, refugees, and those who would be unwelcome in other statelets, the Komi Republic took form, establishing a constitution and democratic institutions which served to end the cycle of violence that which had afflicted it. However, not as all well in the Republic, political conflict and scheming is reaching a crisis point, and it seems that the days of this democracy are limited. So we're going to be getting as a social democracy, but there's apparently, I think, like nine different paths you can go down, all of which I've heard good things about. So let's go ahead and select them. So, yeah, now we can talk in a little more detail real quick. Because uh, cause I'm going to be skipping over some of the events. Go watch some of my live streams or other things. Uh, you know, we're not going to re be reading, like, every single major international event. Because a lot of them, you just see every game. Uh, but basically, Germany... Um, Germany won the war. Uh, they've created a lot of puppet states. So there's like the general uh, government of Poland. There's Ukraine. There's Moscow, Ostland. Uh, the Kingdom of England is part of their faction and, and things like that. Actually, we could take a look at it, the stuff in more detail here. But we are going to be at Komi, which is just part of, as you can see, a total patchwork of Russian uh, warlords. So let's hit it. This should be interesting. 
beginning the five modernizations. Uh, so, wait, oh, what's going on? Don't crash. I haven't actually tested that this works anywhere. A new patch. Who knows what's going on? I was actually going to work on a different series instead of this one, uh, in Equestria at War, where I downloaded a couple of sub-mods, but I think the sub-mods, because I downloaded two, weren't compatible with each other, and so there were some weird bugs happening. Definitely not... Not like base game issues, but I went, oh man, I wanted to use the two sub mods together, but I guess I can't. Oh well, whatever. I'll probably just end up using one instead of the other after we do this series. So, the Komi Republic. Now, as many of you know, this is a reading simulator, except you're not simulating at all, you're literally doing it. Uh, so we're gonna, I, I enjoy it, I enjoy the lore, I think there is some fantastic, um, you know, this is basically great little fictions, alternate history fictions that have been written, very entertaining, and so I'm gonna read an awful lot of them. Let's start with the country info. Comey, the failures of, okay, I guess actually we should probably just discuss really quickly. So so essentially, I, I have not really nailed down what is the hard point of departure in this world, but it seems to be or at least in terms of Russia's fate, that Stalin um, does not take charge after Lenin. Instead, it is uh, Bukharin. So uh, Russia does not, or the Soviet Union as a whole, does not industrialize as fast as it did in our timeline, which is what leads to it losing against uh, Germany. And so they take Moscow and stuff, and then the Western Russian Revolutionary Front forms, which is, you know, before it didn't look like this. Uh, and, you know, we can see the, that they're still, the remnants of them are still alive up here. I'm going to do a West Russian Revolutionary Front game relatively soon. I'm just waiting for a certain update to the New Order to happen, uh, which should hopefully be within the next month and a half at, as of the time of this recording. Anyway... So, so Germany goes through, I think, an economic crisis in the 50s, and uh, that's when the West Russian Revolutionary Front attempts to invade. They fail, and then everything breaks up until, like, you just got, it's like every ideology a country, essentially. So, like, just kind of clicking around randomly. Yeah, we have this despotic regime in Vyatka under uh, Vladimir III, who is the son of uh, Kirill. Yeah, so this is like a Romanov uh, branch over here. There's the Order of St. George religious despotism over here there's the Aryan Brotherhood which is a live stream series I've done I, I recommend checking it out it's very interesting very interesting mechanics uh, and lore uh, the only time I think I've ever been running out of manpower is Russia because of uh, some of the effects that we have to deal with um, and, and uh, yeah so they're like uh, national socialists they're Nazi LARPers basically uh, of course the West Russian Revolutionary Front these are authoritarian socialists here uh, but we are playing as Comey, who are social democrats, but as you can see, this is quite a colorful pinwheel. There's a lot of different party ideologies that are apparently represented within our country. So, um, the failures of Nikolai Bukharin, the German invasion, and the defeat of the West Russian Revolutionary Front against the German Reich bled the people of Russia far too much, subjecting them to unimaginable horror and destitution for little gain. Rather than the workers' utopia promised by the Soviet government, the communist experiment ended in failure as apocalyptic warfare scorched West Russia for the second time in two decades. The former government of the Komi ASSR, a faithful band of Soviet loyalist politicians, gladly went along with Grand Marshal Clement Voroshilov's plan for the restoration of the Soviet government, and Komi, despite the reservations that its highly political deviant population held, gladly slipped into the pocket of the front, until the West Russian Civil War and the transition of the Front's capital to uh, uh, Saikatikivar, which is right there. The war, the political failures of the Front, the final assassination of Alexei Rykov, and the bombing of the Presidentum of the West Russian Revolutionary Front marked the last straw for the Komi government. However, Nikolai Alexevich uh, Vozonesky, the newly appointed head of the Komi, ASSR took executive action to declare independence from the front, being aided in his operation by a slew of former WRRF politicians, including Mikhail Andreev Suzlov, former minister of the front, and Andrei Alexandrovich Zendenov, a prominent official of the Comintern. With the secession of the Komi ASSR from the front under a newly declared republic and the loss of yet another capital, 
The political cohesion of the front dissolved, and more and more separatists ate away at the WRF's armies before operations could be launched to put down the rebellions and warlords. So that's why you end up with this situation. With the democratic nature of the Komi Republic becoming well known throughout Western Russia and the developed city of Sky to I'm going to call it Sky for short. And the developed city of Sky becoming swollen with refugees from other, less accommodating warlord states, a climate of political radicalization began to fester within the Republic, fed by Voznesensky's collaboration with Zendanov's communists and the underground influence of extremist politicians who had been set free from the former gulags in the region. Political violence, grand scheming, and paramilitary activity became commonplace, with the corruption within the Republic's armed forces doing nothing to help matters, despite the efforts of talented officers such as Petro Grigorenko and Ivan Korolokov. The state of the Komi Republic is uh, hardly one conducive to functional democracy or civilized life. Crime is at a record high, with constant paramilitary street battles scattering the silence on the streets of Sky. The plots of shadow ideologues are constantly pit against each other in the form of assassinations, thefts, fraud, assault, extortion, conspiracy against the Republic, while power is brokered within the National Assembly and the Democratic Coalition of relativist, relatively centrist parties attempt to keep order in sane governments. Mikhail Suslov's Communist Party of Komi on the far left and Lev Gumilov Pashineri Organization on the far right constantly attempt to bring down the uh, government in the shadows while maintaining a respectable public opinion. I think Lev is actually the electable um, syndicalist politician in uh, Kaiserreich. Very expensive. I think you got to spend like 200 political power every time you, uh, you, you, you elect him or something. Players of the game. The Komi Republic's politicians are infamous for a particular nature that seems to run through the Republic as a whole. A pseudo-addiction to scheming, backstabbing, and power games. Regardless of whether they personally tolerate such underhanded tactics, the environment of the Republic demands such tendencies, and so the politicians which survive this unimaginably stressful environment tend to be forged into metaphorical diamonds. Master schemers and maneuvers who can manipulate entire parties beneath their thumb. Okay, I guess now we're going to go through all the, uh, the various people in charge here. The center, you know what, if I'm going to read all this, I'm going to need some water. Be right back. All right, we're back. Just had, kind of had bad cotton mouth. I had a couple of very, very spicy, meaning lots of spices, not hot spicy, uh, things for dinner last night. So it gave me cotton mouth, even after I brushed my teeth and drank water and such. So, despite the wide variety of democratic parties and the issues which cleave movements apart in Comey, the saving grace of the Republic is that democracy, too, is a political question and a hot-button topic. The intensity of the efforts to tear down democracy has forged the otherwise disparate centrist parties into a ramshackle coalition to preserve the electoral system at all costs and fight radicalism. The ruling People's Democratic Socialist Party, also known as the DSMP, Union of Young Reformers, the SMR, and the Sovereign Democratic Party, PSD, which, uh... Okay, yeah, those are authoritarian Democrats. So it's basically social Democrats, liberal Democrats, authoritarian Democrats. Have all become tempered allies in the environment of the Republic. Nikolai Alexevich Voz Voznesensky, that's our current leader, is the president of the Republican leader of the People's Democratic Socialist Party since its founding. He's a rather controversial man. Despite his initial electoral popularity, his constant scandals, often revolving around his abrasiveness, racist co comments, or allegations of corruption, have eroded his popularity and cast many members of his party into an unfavorable public light. His friendship with the communist leader Andrei Zdenov has come under scrutiny in recent months, and it only remains to be seen whether the 1963 election shall be the end of his career or merely the start of his next term. Okay, now here's where I think we start looking at all the potential leaders that we have here. Or at least whoever's in charge of the various parties right now. Remember, I'm going into this blind. Alexei Nikolaevich Kosyengen. This is the person who is uh, the, in charge of the SMR. A prominently a prominent elected de deputy and leader of the Union of Young Reformers, Alexei Kosygin is famed as a rather quiet and respectful politician who serves as a chief peacemaker within the center. However, his disillusionment with the current composition of the coalition is growing with each and every new scandal. And, and every new scandal Voznensky finds himself in, and he constantly finds himself looking at his own potential bid for power, along with his close fr friend Svetlana Stala Stalina, uh, Kosygin forms the hardline wing of the uh, <clears throat> centrist coalition, 
the wing that will never allow for capitulation to the radicals. Speaking of Svetlana, the former DSNP member who split to form the Sovereign Democratic Party following yet another infamous scandal. Svetlana Stalina is a rather young and idealistic firebrand who has overcome her reputation as a splitter and cut out a position as a force in her own party. Stalina forms the trustworthy right flank of the coalition with a platform that combines a patriotic security-centered policy with a strong focus on welfare and public works. Her constant praise of institutional power and stability, as well as her desire to stabilize the foundation of the republic by any means necessary, has led to constant accusations of authoritarianism, but her coalition partners tend to dismiss these claims. After all, Stalina is utterly uncompromising. In her eyes, a strong democratic Russian free republic is worth the cost, no matter how painful the means are to get there. I've actually read her book, um, but I lost it. Okay, The Left. The Communist Party of Comey is notable in that it is the most unified political wing of the Republic. So this is a uh, KPR. Oh, it looks like, oh, they're split up. Uh, the infamous Mikhail Suzlov has forged an ironclad political machine out of the far left. So that's here, the KPK. <laughs> Leading successful operation after operation to stage scandals, shatter the people's confidence in the government, and establish an environment of constant pressure on the Republic's security forces. However, despite its unity, not all is well within the Communist Party. The cracks between its leaders are vis invisible in public, but all too apparent behind closed doors. In the eyes of party leaders, a conflict between Mikhail Sulov and Ivan Serov's Orthodox faction. So that's the, uh, where's Ivan Serov? I don't even see him on here. And Andrei Zendov and Svetlana Bukharin's reformist faction is inevitable. Oh, oh, wait, these two work together. That's what it is. So it's Mikhail Sulov and then Ivan Serov is, I guess, his lieutenant. And then Andrei Zdenov, who's the libertarian socialist, uh, Bukharina must be his lieutenant. It's inevitable. All that remains to be seen is how destructive it shall be to the party's very foundations. Uh, Svetlana is uh, Bukharina's daughter, I believe. Okay, break it down. Break them down even further. Mikhail Andreyeva Sulov, the stories that one would hear of Comey's famous shadow mas infamous shadow master, Mikhail Suzlov are awe-inspiring and wide in scope. According to various citizens of the Republic, Suzlov is personally behind nearly every aspect of the chaos in Comey, personally orchestrating street battles, robberies, and blackmailing rings while he plays the violin in his townhouse. <clears throat> Not every story is true, of course, but Suzlov's reputation speaks for itself. The famed leader within the WRF with such a fearful political reputation that Mikhail Tukhachevsky condemned him for cooing the government without any evidence. Suslov has maintained his talents throughout the Russian wasteland, honing them more and more as his career advances. Now, I don't think Tukhachevsky is uh, in here. It, he's up in the West Russian Revolutionary Front, so it's just saying that the guy up here condemned him when, I guess, the breaking apart was happening. Suslov is a brilliant man who views the Republic as his chessboard, a complex machine made up of interlocking mechanisms of class conflict and civil strife. With every move of his paramilitaries and unaffiliated deputies in the National Assembly, he comes closer and closer to his goal, the end of the Republic and the restoration of the USSR, with himself as the Grey Cardinal behind it all. Then there is Andrei Alexandrovich Zendenov. So this is the libertarian socialist wing. Like, more Leninist, I guess. He is the leader of the Communist Party's National Assembly delegation and one of the highest figures in the party, yet his libertarianism and populism seem to fly in the face of what Suzlov is widely considered to want. Zenit Zdenov is a visionary in every way, a fierce, charismatic firebrand, yet he tends to align with Voznensensky's government constantly, seemingly missing opportunities to perpetuate the revolution that the Communist Party so desires. The mystery behind Zdenov's motivations and operations raise many questions, but none can doubt his character. According to many centrists across the aisle, if one communist were to take power, it would have to be Zdenov. After all, where else could one find such a charming, moderate, populist spirit? So I guess this is like, he's like Sablin. All right, another Svetlana. Svetlana Nikolaevna Bukharina. The emergence of the daughter of the doomed Nikolai Bukharin within the Republic was hardly expected, but it was hailed by many communists as a sign that their movement was destined for greatness compared to the ranks of the old VKPB. Svetlana Bukharina rapidly rose in the ranks of the Communist Party, being elected by unheard of margins, bringing her unstoppable energy and ambition with her. Despite her comparative youth compared to many figures within the government, her questionable adherence to the letter of the line that Suslov promotes within the party, Bukharina is, certain, is most certainly one of the foremost 
communists within the Republic, and the brightest, most radiant rising star among their number. Okay, I think, is that finally it? No, we have more! The right! How could we forget the right? We did the center, we did the left, now it's time for the right. The Passionere... Passionari organization is a singularly bizarre organization in, in, in Comey. So this is the um, Passionari. Passionari. Here we go. National Socialists. So these are Nazis. Right? Under Lev Gumililov. Hmm, maybe I'm mixing him up then. Then again, it's another timeline. Under the winding... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the Eurasian guy, I think. Uh, this is a singularly bizarre organization in Comey, a combination of a social club, a secret society, and an apparatus for political coalition building. Under the wide-spanning umbrella of the Passionary are Eura Eurasianists, compassionate conservatives, monarchists, and other smaller movements, all united solely by the desire for a new right-wing path for the Republic. The Passionary are easily the most wide-ranging coalition in Comey, stretching to every possible corner of right-wing thought, and as of such, paradoxically both prone to infighting and extremely effective at operating within the Republic. Within the Passionary, there is someone for everyone, or so it says. Probably meant to say something. Or so it is said, the media outlets controlled by the organization appeal to the people, rallies are held, and the center coalition is forced to look closer and closer towards Passionary official affiliated politicians each day. So here's the head of this. Lev Nikolaevich Gumilov. There's only one man in the Republic with the cunning and political acumen to unite so many disparate rightist groups under one batter. And his name is Lev Gumilov. Yeah, okay, I'm, I think I'm mixing him up with somebody else. Um, an eccentric philosopher and a well-spoken ideologue, Gumilov was the ideological heart of the PO, and the brain as well. His theories of a Eurasian civilizational empire are ones that most of the Comey right can at least pretend to get behind, and his ideals of rapid expansionism, the restoration of national strength, and a culture of patriotism appeal to the teeming multitudes that attend his rallies. Despite his seemingly unthinkable level of extremism, Gumilov is the center of the Passionary in spirit, and he will not halt his shadowy operations until his theories may be tested and realized on the grandest scale imaginable. Next up is Igor Rostislavich Sharevik. Uh, every movement needs a face, and Igor Shevarev is a respectable face indeed. A well-respected academic of the Republic, Shevarev heads the moderate moralist wing of the Passionary, the wing most keyed to gathering public support and the support of the centrists within the National Assembly. Shevarevic is one of the most famous voices of the Passionary, and his calls for a national democracy based off of compassionate conservative principles are heard around the Republic on widespread venues such as Radio Free Sky, the preeminent broadcasting service within the Republic. As the left grows larger and more threatening, Shevarevic's commitment to democracy and willingness to cooperate with the center has driven more and more politicians amongst the right wing of the ruling coalition to look his way, seeking deliverance from the communist threat. Next up is Sergei Vlad. I think this is the last one. Sergei Vladimirovich Taboritsky, the Black Horse of Komi. The enigmatic Sergei Taboritsky is famous as an almost anachronistic figure. His imperial regalia, his nostalgic calls for the restoration of the Russian Empire. Ah, I think this is our Burgundian. And his vast hidden personal wealth may, in a different state, tear the people away from supporting him. But in Comey, it merely serves to captivate the imagination. Tabaritsky is quite possibly the most populist of the Passionary, entirely campaigning for his OVRI, the Society for the Restoration of the Russian Empire. However, among those who have spent time close to him, it has become apparent that something is very, very wrong with Tabaritsky. The look in his eyes is not quite that of a man driven by sheerly mortal energy, and his mannerisms have grown consistently more bizarre. So there it is. That's everybody is. The features. Fight through the storm of intrigue to save the Republic or bring it crashing down. Experiment with the many ideologies and parties present within the Republic and bring one to victory. Put an end to warlordism and anarchy. Unite Russia under the flag of one of Comey's many contenders. So, uh, for the Republic... Uh, do we need to do any region info? Yeah, this is this is just kind of... I guess you guys can pause it. I'll scroll slowly, but this just kind of sums up what's going on. Um, what's going on in the West, uh, meaning like everybody out there. Uh, and we're done. So, let's actually get started, shall we? Uh, 
we kind of already heard about this guy. He's a controversial populist. You can pause and read that if you want. Uh, consumer Good Factory is minus 10%. Daily Political Power Gain minus 10%. Stability minus 5%. And we've got, uh, he, he's got a good ideological drift defense. So I guess that's why he's, he's stabilizing things. We've got some national spirits here. We have the Luftwaffe uh, terror bombings. Basically, the, the German Air Force regularly bombs into uh, the Western Russian area. It's a way to keep them, uh, you know, submissive and down and, 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 you know, prevent them from rising up again. So we get a bunch of penalties to production efficiency cap, growth, consumer good factories, construction speed, just lots of bad stuff. We have here a place for all of us because of all the ideologies that are here in Comey. So it hurts our stability and organization, but increases our war support and daily political power gain by a quarter of a point. The Clash of the Shadows, because of manipulators within uh, the center. Yes, yeah, social democrats, social liberal. It says social liberal, but I think that's just a coding thing. That means the liberal democracies. Uh, so essentially the center, wait, whoops. The center is every day losing support. Um, division recovery rate is down, and so is our political power gain. And finally, we've got the uh, sky kicked Kavar arsenal. There's a treasure trove of... Soviet technology and weaponry. So this helps us attack and defend on core territory, but it hurts our war support and recovery rate because we can use the gas. All right. And then there's all the political and military laws, whatever. Um, let's start figuring out what we want to do here. I guess we need to start with our focus tree. Very small right now, but obviously it'll change later uh, once we've figured out what it is we want to do. So we have here affairs of the National Assembly, figuring out like a budget, and there's several bills here. Foundation of sand, party composition. And so we can figure out what path we want to go to within the coalition. So there's like Svetlana, we stay in the center, we can go to the left. Daughter of the Soviet Union. That's uh, Stalina, or, or no, no, oh no, no, this is probably Bukharina. Huh. Uh, once the lieutenant of Sulov, this new leader is derived from these three tidbits of. I'm pretty sure this is Bukharina, right here. Uh, so, yeah, I think what we'll do is I'm just going to use a random number generator to have me go through these areas. Uh, this stuff over here on the right looks like it's done pretty quickly. Just two weeks for pretty much everything. Yeah. So these are probably things that are going to help fix the country up. Which is going to be good no matter who we end up playing as. So I think we'll do that. And then we'll figure out what we're going to do in the center. Now, it said the elections aren't until 63. So we definitely have got some time to kill. Let them burn themselves right out. So, the affairs of the National Assembly. Let's get to it. Uh, we're going to cut through precedent and tradition, changing long-standing laws. Anything could be possible. All right. And in terms of research slot, let's first see what kind of infantry equipment do we have. Ooh, it's behind. Uh, let's fix that up. Um, engineering. Can't go wrong. Getting the research speed up. Oh, yeah. Anything in the decision tabs here? Oh, okay, okay. Friend on the left. Let's read this, and then we're probably going to call it a day. Oh, there's a few different decisions here. Goodness gracious. Uh, uh huh. Of course, this is the shorter term goal to form the West Russian Free Republic, or maybe it'll be called something else depending on what our ideology is. But uh, you know, unite the West. Again, just just for those of you who don't know, Russia is basically divided into four areas. There's the West Russia. There's Western Siberia, Central Siberia, and then East Siberia. And they're, they're just going to keep uniting until we've got four, and then two, and then the last two fight each other. Uh, so it looks like uh, we can work with the commies. He may currently call in up to eight favors. So we could, I don't know, increase or decrease the influences of him. If our commitment to him is too high, drastic communists, excuse me, drastic consequences could occur. Huh. House of Cards, the political scene. I guess I'll read this and that'll be it. Uh, the political scene in the Komi Republic is one of the most chaotic and dangerous on the planet with a variety of movements clashing the National Assembly, the streets, and in dark back rooms. In the unstable Republic, political paramilitaries are treated as legitimate partisan 
partisan apparatus extortion is a standard practice and only the greatest schemers may survive to rise to the top in the republic one influence one's influence must thus be maintained and guarded lest the environment of the republic claim more one more hopeful victim the most powerful political faction in the Comey republic is the political center on the right we've got lev marginal uh most influential figure is lev who's uh got marginal influence taborski has irrelevant influence in the center, we, like who we are now, is the most significant. So this is kind of like, you know, it, it, it seems to be similar to the Senate in um, the Senate mechanic in the U.S. in this game. So we got a jockey for position. Suslov is in charge here. So we could raise influence and stuff. Okay. So it looks like I'm probably going to actually have to commit to what I'm going to try to do. So what I might do at the start of the next episode is we might uh, do something like hit use a random number generator to decide which path I want to try to stay on. And then from there, use another random number generator to uh, subdivide it again. So for example, let's say I might list, do like one, two, three for left, right, center. And then if I roll two for center, I would then roll one, two, three again to see if I'm gonna go right, center, or left, which these are backwards, just a little bit annoying. Uh, not a big deal, they probably did it on purpose to annoy people. Uh, but thank you for joining me. I'm Conquering History Games. In the next episode, I promise we're going to unpause. And, uh, yeah, we'll get to it with this blind Comey campaign. I have no idea what we're in for, but I've only heard universally good things. So I'm not even too worried about, you know, I was just talking about using a, a random generator. But, um, I don't know, like, like, this seems pretty straightforward. You just pick one of the trees, but let's say I roll right and then or, or like and i get the wrong person on the right that, that, that in charge for then what i was going for whatever we're just on a marvelous adventure it should be interesting so uh i'm conquering history games please be sure to subscribe if you have not already and click the bell so you'll always be notified whenever a new episode of this series is going up on the channel and i will see you in the next one